بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So uh, we'll just continue from uh, So we'll just continue from uh, where we uh, left off inshallah uh, and we arrived at this chapter we arrived at this chapter, Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, and uh, we'll be completing that today, inshallah. So, uh, the night journey, uh, so this is regarding the night journey of the Prophet, uh, where he went to um, Jerusalem, and then from there he rose to the heavens by the permission of Allah. So, uh, we'll continue. So, then the Shaykh on point 61, he says, Qawluhu rahmahullah. وَبَعْدَ لَا شَرِيُّ رِجَى بِهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ بَقِيَ صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر سنين عشر سنين على هذا ينهى عن الشرك ويدعو إلى التوحيد يؤسس هذا الأساس ثم في السنة الحادي ثم في السنة الحادية عشر أسري به من المسجد الحرام إلى مسجد الأقصى قال تعالى سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى بينما هو صلى الله عليه وسلم نائم في بيت أم هانئ جاءه جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام ومعه دابة يقال لها البراق أقل من البغل وفوق الحمار ويقع خطوه عند مد بصره فأركب عليه السلام عليها وذهب وذهب به إلى بيت المقدس في الليل. So in this paragraph, the Sheikh he starts off with and he says he quotes the uh, original author's uh, text from the original book, uh, and which is followed by his explanation, as you know. So um, the Sheikh he mentions says قوله, so his speech رحمه الله may Allah mercy upon him, where he said that after. 10 days, so after 10 days, uh, sorry, for, uh, so after 10, the uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu was taken on this uh, night journey and then he was taken to the heavens as well. So he went to Jerusalem and then taken to the heavens. And so this word 10, here the Shaykh, he explains it. He says that the Prophet Sallallahu remained in Mecca 10 years where he prohibited from the practice of shirk and he called the people to the practice of tawheed, as you remember from the previous lesson where the Sheikh explained this to us. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he established uh, uh, this foundation for 10 years. He, he established this and continued upon this uh, foundation of uh, warning against committing acts of shirk and calling the people to the uh, to uh, the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Worshipping Allah alone yeah, Without any partners Or sharing your worship With other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So then the Shaykh he says So in the 11th year He was taken on this journey Miraculous night journey as we know it He was taken to to uh, He was taken from Al-Masjid Al-Haram In Mecca To Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa In Jerusalem yeah, and we're all familiar with that. And then the Shaykh, he quotes an ayah, the first ayah from Surah Al-Isra. So if we go ahead and look at the meaning of the translation, the, its meaning, then if we go to Surah Al-Isra, give me a second. Of the translation, the meaning of the translation, glorified and exalted be he, Allah, above all evil, they associate with him. 
who took his slave Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for a journey by night from Al Masjid Al Haram at Mecca to the farthest mosque in Jerusalem, the neighborhood whereof we are blessed, in order that we might show him Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam of our ayat proof, proofs, evidence, evidences, lessons, signs, etc. Verily, he is the All Hearer, the All Seer. So that's the whole ayah. And so then the Sheikh he goes on to say that while the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was sleeping in the bait of Umm Hani. Jibril came to him, alayhi salatu was salam, and with Jibril was this uh, a four-legged uh, animal, four-legged animal called al burak It's uh, smaller than uh, a mule, like so, it's smaller than like a mule. It's smaller than a mule, but it it it's uh, taller uh, than than a donkey. So it in terms of its stature. So in terms of stature, it's less than a mule going to here and it's above a, a, a donkey right um, and there's a description regarding it here that that every time it takes a step it's it's like as if it's traveling at the speed of, of light it's tra- it travels fast it can travel fast like within a blink of an eye in a, within a blink of an eye it can travel vast uh, swaths of land basically this is what the Sheikh is trying to say here and so the Prophet he rode um, on, on this uh, on this uh, Burak uh, and he was taken uh, to Al Bayt Al Maqdis, Jerusalem. Yeah, Bayt Al Maqdis at, at night during the night. Then the Sheikh he goes on to say, Asra min uh, min al Sara, wa huwa huwa sayr bil Layl, wa hada min khawasihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wa min mu'jizatihi alaihi salatu wasallam. Faltaqa hunak. مع الأنبياء في بيت المقدس ثم إنه صلى الله عليه وسلم ورجى إلى السماء يأني رفع من بيت المقدس إلى السماء بصحبة جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام ومعنى العروج الصعود فأسري به من مكة إلى بيت المقدس وورج به من بيت المقدس إلى السماء يأني صعد به جبريل عليه السلام ومر بأهل السماوات كل سماء يستفتيه جبريل فيفتح له فيفتح له ثم انتهى إلى السماء السابعة ثم صعد فوق السماوات إلى سدرة المنتهى وعندها وعندها كلمه الله من وحيه بما شاء ففرض عليه الصلوات الخمس فرضها في في اليوم والليلة خمسين صلاة ولكن موسى عليه السلام أشار على النبينا على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بأن يسأل ربه التخفيف فإن فإن أمته لا تطيق لا تطيق خمسين صلاة صلاة في اليوم والليلة فما زال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يراجع ربه ويسأله التخفيف حتى انتهت إلى خمس. So let's just stop there for a second and then we'll move on to the next page. So then uh, the Sheikh goes to say that the word Asra, uh, as we read from the Quran and the Sheikh mentioned it as well in the, par- in the paragraphs that we've read, uh, that Asra, it means Asra, and that basically means to travel at night. So this word specifically means, if you ever hear somebody saying it, it means that somebody traveled at night. So if I said like Asraitu or Asraita, or for example, you travel, then if I use this word, then it means or if anybody uses this word, it means that they travelled in the night time. Specific word, yeah? This is what the Sheikh mentions to us from a linguistic benefit. And also then the Sheikh, he says that that this night travel, this night journey is from the, spe- the things that are specific to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and from uh, his miracles, these miracles that are attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then when he arrived... Uh, in Bayt al Maqdis, Jerusalem, he met the prophets there in Bayt al Maqdis, as the Sheikh mentions here. Then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from Bayt al Maqdis, he uh, was taken to the heavens above. He was taken above. He, w- he was made to ascend up to the heavens from Bayt al Maqdis, from that point. And he was accompanied by Jibreel alayhi salam. And then the Sheikh mentions here that the meaning of Al-Uruj and it means a Saud. 
So Al-Uruj or Al-Mi'raj, this word Mi'raj or Al-Uruj, which is all the conjugation, Uruj and Urija, these all words, all these words, uh, uh, whether they are nouns or whether they are verbs, they all mean to rise, to go upwards, to ascend. And the Shaykh gives us that benefit as well. So then Shaykh says that he was taken. So he was he went on this night journey, the Prophet Sallallahu from Mecca uh, to Beit al maqdis And then from there, he ascended uh, with the company of uh, Jibreel alayhi salam to the heavens. And so oh, and all that time he was in the company of Jibreel alayhi salam. And then he passed by the people of the heavens. And every heaven of the seven heavens, every heaven that the that that, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi passed, then or uh, he came across, then it was uh, Jibril Alaihi Salam. Jibril Alaihi Salam opened that for him, and and then they moved on, up until they reached the seventh, the most highest uh, heaven. Up until they got to the low tree, Sidratul Muntaha, the low tree, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, shortly we'll. Uh, We'll go through an ayah and the meaning of it, which will help explain further uh, with regards to that as well. And then, uh, when they reach this tree, this Sidratul Muntaha, this is where uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala spoke to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, and uh, from revelation and um, uh, made obligatory the prayer. Th this is the time when the prayer. This is the situation. This instance where um, the prayer was made obligatory and a pillar of our deen. And as we know uh, with regards to this, that eventually it was uh, five daily prayers, but it started with 50. And then uh, then Musa alayhi salam advised the Prophet that your ummah, that your nation will never be able to uh, cope, basically cope with this, uh, this amount of prayers. And this occurred up until... Where, uh, uh, then uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, asked him uh, for it, it to be um, uh, made lighter, and this uh, this scenario occurred up until uh, uh, the number five was reached, so five daily prayers, and then that was it. So then we move on to the next page. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, "Fakal Allah Azza wa Jal, kama fi hadith al Isra wal Mi'raj, amdaytu faridati wa khafaftu an ibadi." وأجزي الحس وأجزي الحسنة عشرة وفي رواية أنس وفي رواية أنس أبي ذر قال أن أبي ذر قال فقال يا خمس وهي خمسون أي خمس في العمل وخمسون في الميزان. so then the sheikh he says that Allah سبحانه وتعالى Allah عز وجل in in the hadith regarding the Isra wal Mi'raj where he mentions what we just read in Arabic but we'll uh, if we translate this, if we look at the translation of this hadith, uh, then uh, let me just go there for a second. So here it is. So it's a bit where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, he says, I have decreed the reward for my obligation and I have reduced the burden for my slaves and I will give a tenfold reward for each good deed. So this is the, the meaning of, of this. And uh, what we've read there in this regard in this hadith, and then there's another narration uh, where it's mentioned uh, on the authority of uh, Abi Dhar uh, radiallahu anhu, where he said that that five it means fifty, and what that means is that each prayer that we complete, and you know, the, the from the prayers, from the farida, from the farz that we, as they say in Urdu, from the obligations, is that each prayer that you complete, it's ten. Is worth 10. So if you complete all five, it's 50, isn't it? Yeah. So so that's what's meant here. And the Shaykh will explain further anyway for us, inshallah. So it's so you complete five, even though it's five in number that you've actually in your actions, five, but in the scales, it's worth 50. Yeah. Like that. So then uh, the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, Khamsu salawatin fil yomi wa laylati tu adil khamsina salatan fil mizan. Lian al hasanata. بعشر أمثالها فالصلاة الواحدة عن عشر نشر سلوات فالإسراء ذكر أول سورة سبحان سورة بني إسرائيل والمئراج ذكر أول سورة النجم. So then the Sheikh mentions that. So he says five prayers during the day and night. They uh, 
um, calculate to, we could use our word, calculate to 50 uh, prayers in the scales. Yeah? So it's worth 50 prayers in the scales, but in our actions, we're only praying five, aren't we? Uh, but, and, and the Sheikh says that's what this means, that five in action when you're actually praying, but the reward is 50 in the scales. Yep. That's what the Sheikh mentions. And he goes, why? Because he says he, he says that a hasana, a hasana or a good deed is uh, intense. It comes intense. So every that good deed you do is worth 10. So, you know, if you times it by five, you get 50. Yeah. And this is what the Sheikh's mentioned here. And then the Sheikh goes on to say here, uh, towards the end of this paragraph, he says that the Al-Isra, that this night journey is mentioned in the beginning of uh, Surah Al-Subhan, as in Surah Al-Isra, right, as we read the first ayah from there, and and also Surah to bani Israel, and the Mi'raj, the ascension to the heavens, is mentioned in the starting part of Surah Al-Najm. And then the Sheikh brings those ayahs for us. And we will also look at the uh, translated meanings as well, inshallah. So then the Sheikh says, he quotes his ayahs from Surah Al-Najm, verse 13 to 18. And then the Sheikh says, so if we go to the translation, the meaning, the translated meanings, we'll see, inshallah, it'll also help explain a few things that we read in the previous paragraph. So let's go there. <clears throat> and indeed he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saw him, Jibreel, at second descent, i.e. another time. Near Sidratul Muntaha, the low tree of the utmost boundary beyond which none can pass. Near it is the paradise of abode, when that covered the low tree which did cover it. The sight of Prophet Muhammad turned not aside right or left, nor it transgressed beyond the limit ordained for it. Indeed, he, Muhammad وسلم, did see of the greatest signs of his Lord Allah. So that's the uh, meanings of those ayahs. Uh, and the Shaykh then says that this is the Mi'raj, the ascension, regarding the ascension that Allah is mentioning here. This is the proofs for the ascension, yeah, for the Prophet. ﷺ. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, says, Thumma innahu nazala min as ila bayt al maktisi, Thumma innahu raja ila makkata fi lilatihi, Falamma uh, asbaha wa akhbar al nas, Bidalika al mu'minun zada imanuhum. وَأَمَّا الْكُفَّارِ فَزَادَ شَرُّهُمْ وَفَرِحُوا بِهَادَا وَرَاحُوا يَشْحَرُونَ بِهِ كَيْفَ يَزْعُمْ صَاحِبَكُمْ أَنَّهُ ذَهَبَ إِلَى بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ So we'll just stop there for a second. So then the Shaykh, he says, So then, he descended from the, from the heavens uh, to Bayt al-Maqdis, right? Uh, and then he returned to Mecca in the same night. So then when he entered the morning, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered the morning, he informed the people, you know, his companions and the people around him with what happened. And the believers, their iman increased when they heard, uh, uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed about what happened, informed them about what happened. As for the disbelievers, it increased them in their evil. So, they started saying, they started saying bad things, you know, how could it be possible or, you know, making fun, uh, you know, how could this be possible? How could you do this? You know, how, how could you get there to Jerusalem? It takes days and they're trying to use their own uh, uh, extrapolations from their own travels. Um, and this is what the Sheikh mentions here. So we'll, com we'll complete the uh, paragraph. Then the Sheikh says, وَرَجَى مِنْهُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ نضرب أكباد الإبل إليها شهرا ذهابا وشهرا إيابا ويقيسون قدرة الخالق بقدرة المخلوق فكان الإسراء والمئراج امتحانا من الله عز وجل للناس المشركون زاد تنذرهم وشرهم 
So then the Shaykh goes on to say what, what these the disbelievers at that time um, were saying. And, and they're saying basically, how could he go, the Prophet ﷺ, travel in one night to Bayt al-Maqdis and then come back in the same night, whereas it takes us, this is what they're saying from their own mouths, it takes us, you know, months and it takes us effort and it takes a long time, basically, as you can imagine at that time, travel, you know, it would take months to travel to places and it would be a, a tough ordeal. Um, and so they were saying this and the Sheikh says that basically they were comparing uh, the, uh, the ability of the creation with the ability of the creator. Because Allah allowed this to happen. He's a creator of everything. If he wishes something to occur, if he wants something to occur, it happens. So they were obviously comparing their abilities with the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they don't compare. They, you can't compare them. Right? So this is what the Sheikh mentions. And so the Sheikh says in the final part of this paragraph, uh, the paragraph of this page here, the first paragraph, he says that in the end, this this Al-Isra wal Mi'raj it was a test from Allah uh, from Allah Azawajal for the people. So the idolaters, the mushrikun, increased them in their evil, basically, and to mock the Prophet Sallam and trying to demean him, etc. And for the Muslims, the believers, they increased them in Iman. So this was a test from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, فَلِهَذَا لَمَا قَالَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ لِأَبِي بَكْرَ السِّدِّيكَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ انظر إلى صاحبك ماذا قال قال وماذا قال قالوا يزعم أنه ذهب به إلى بيت المقدس وورج به إلى السماء وإنه جاء في ليلة واحدة قال أبو بكر الصديق إن كان قاله فهو كما قال لقد صدق قالوا كيف ذلك قال أنا أصدقه فيما هو أعظم من ذلك أنا أصدقه في خبر السماء ينزل عليه فكيف لا أصدقه في الإسراء إلى بيت المقدس So then in this paragraph the Shaykh he says that that the Mushrikun, the idolaters, they said to uh, Abu Bakr, they said to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, look to your companion, look to what he said, look to what your companion said. And so Abu Bakr replied, he said, what did he say? So then they said, he thinks, or he's asserting that he went from, he went to Bayt al-Maqdis and ascended from there to the heavens, to the skies, to the heavens. And that he and that he came and he went there and came back to Makkah in one night. Then Abu Bakr Radil uh, Abu Bakr Radiallahu Anhu said, he said, if he said that, then it is then it is as he said it. And he has told the truth. They said, How is that? And then he said, I I believe him in that which is more magnificent and greater than what you mentioned to me. I believe, yeah, I believe to be the truth in terms of what Allah has revealed from revelation, it sends down from the heavens. So how can I not believe him in, in the Isra, the night journey to Bayt al-Maqdis? So this is what uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said to, uh, in reply to the idolaters, the mushrikun at that time. Then the Shaykh goes to say, وَهَذَا بِقُدْرَةِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ لَا بِقُدْرَةِ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلْمَ إِنَّمَا وَبِقُدْرَةِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ وَهَذَا مِنْ مُعْجِزَاتِ هَذَا الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلْمَ وَمِنْ كَرَامَتِهِ إِنْ دَ رَبِّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ So then in this in the paragraph on this page here, then the Shaykh says that this is, this is by the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is why that he was able to uh, travel such far distances and return as well within one night which is not possible otherwise why because it's by the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah allowed that to happen yeah and it isn't to do with the ability of the prophet himself it's to do with the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh says that this is from the miracles of our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is and you know this is from the miracles that, that, uh, that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
came with, yeah, by the permission of Allah. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, وَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْإِتِقَادَاتِ بِأَنَّهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أُسْرِيَ وَأُرِجَ بِرُوحِ وَجِسْمِهِ مَعًا يَقِذَةً لَا مَنَامًا لِأَنَّ بَعْدَ النَّاسِ يَقُولُونَ أَصْرَى بِرُوحِهِ وَأَمَّا جَسِدُهُ فَلَمْ يَبْرَحْ مَكَّةَ وَإِنَّمَا أُسْرِيَ وَأُرِجَ بِرُوحِهِ وَهَذَا كَلَامُ الْبَاطِلِ بَلْ أَنَّهُ أُسْرِيَ بِرُوحِهِ وَجَسِدِهِ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ وَهُمِلَا عَلَى الْبُرَاقِ وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ يَقِذَةً لَا مَنَامًا إِذْ لَوْ كَانَ بِرُوحِهِ فَقَتْ أَوْ كَانَ مَنَامًا فَمَا الْفَرْقُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الرُّؤْيَا والله جل وعلا يقول سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده So then in this paragraph the Sheikh he goes on to say he says that and it's incumbent for us to believe to have these beliefs that the Prophet Sallallahu he was taken on this night journey himself in body and spirit he was taken himself he went he was taken and it isn't to be said that he was in some kind of dream or, or it was a vision or it was just his spirit or something like that as the Sheikh says here that some of the people incorrectly say he actually went is in his physical sense as well as the spirit, spiritual sense he his whole body he was there he went there and he was taken from Mecca physically and he went to Beit al-Maqdis Jerusalem and then ascended from there to the heavens as the Sheikh mentioned in the previous paragraphs and he was awake and he knew what was going on and he, he, he experienced all of this right while he was awake this is what the Sheikh says and then he quotes the ayah that we read earlier as well Subhanallah asra bi abdihi that that you know, Subhanallah, uh, yeah, Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi. Yeah, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, took his slave, his slave mentioned his slave. Yeah, the Sheikh will explain further. So in this next paragraph, the Sheikh says, "Fal abdu yutlaku ala ruhin wal badan, jami an la yutlaku ala ruhin wahdaha anha abd, wala yutlaku ala al badan wahdahu anhu abd, la yutlaku illa." على مجموع الروح والبدن لم يقول سبحان الذي أسرى بروح عبده بل قال أسرى بعبده والعبد هو مجموع الروح والبدن والله جل وعلا لا يؤجزه شيء وهو القادر على كل شيء So then the Sheikh says that uh, here in the next paragraph explaining the previous paragraph that it says that the slave this word العبد in this ayah سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده Al-Abd, as in his servant, his slave, as in the Prophet ﷺ, it, 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 it's not just uh, contained um, or uh, constricted to uh, just his spirit. Rather, it encompasses and it means his spirit and the body together. Him as a person, all of him went on this night journey. And it's not just restricted to the spirit, for example, only as in because it's mentioned Abd is mentioned here, servant, slave. And it also uh, isn't just... Uh, and then the Sheikh says here, يُطْلَقُ عَلَى الْبَدَنْ وَحْدَهُ أَنَّهُ عَبْد So then we're going to say, the Sheikh goes on to say here, that it's all of him, his spirit and his body. He all, all of it. All, he as a whole person went. And then the Sheikh says, brings further evidence, he says, Allah did not say in his book, he didn't say, Subhanallah, the asra bi ruhi abdihi. He didn't say that Allah, you know, that Allah made him travel in the night journey uh, by way of uh, the spirit of his slave. He didn't say that. He said his slave, as in totality, yeah, as in as the Sheikh mentioned in the last couple of lines. And so the Sheikh he just mentions this, and he says that this is, uh, and he mentions here the Sheikh mentions in the last line uh, of this paragraph that nothing. Uh, prevents Allah from doing something. You know, it, you know, Allah is capable. If He wants to do something, He can do it. Yeah. You know, Allah is all powerful. Yeah, all capable of everything. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Let's have a look. I think we just have. Okay, we just have one more page to go. Inshallah. So we should be done in about five minutes. Inshallah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Qala rahimahullah." وفردت عليه سلوات الخمس وصلى في مكة ثلاثة سنين في مكة ثلاثة سنين. so then the sheikh mentions the rijlat he says قال رحمه الله 
uh, he said, may Allah have mercy upon him, uh, that the uh, five daily prayers were uh, were made an obligation, uh, and he and he prayed them, and and they were and they were established in Mecca for uh, for three years, three years, yeah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, وَكَانَ يُسَلِّيهَا رَكْعَتَيْنَ رَكْعَتَيْنَ فَلَمَّا هَاجَرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَتَمَّتُ الرُّبَعِيَّةِ إِلَىٰ أَرْبَعِ إِلَىٰ أَرْبَعٍ إِلَّا الْفَجْرِ فَإِنَّهَا تَطُولُ فِيهَا الْقِرَاءَةِ فَبَقِيَتْ رَكْعَتَيْنَ كَمَا هِيَ وَإِلَّا الْمَغْرِبُ فَإِنَّهُ ثَلَاثٌ فَإِنَّهُ ثَلَاثٌ مِنْ أَوَّلِ مَا فُرِدَتْ لِأَنَّهَا وِتْرُ النَّهَارِ أَمَّا الظَّهْرُ أما الظهر والعصر والعشاء وكانت في في مكة ركعتين ركعتين فهاجر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتمت أربع ركعات. so then in this paragraph the sheikh goes on to say that that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم will used to pray uh, the all the prayers these prayers uh, uh, two rakas uh, two rakas and two rakas like that two rakas two rakas. so when he uh, Emigrated uh, when the Prophet uh, emigrated to uh, Medina, uh, then then the completion of them becoming uh, or the introduction of them and completion of them becoming four rakat occurred. Yeah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say because except Fajr, because indeed he said Fajr in it, uh, your the Qira'ah is long. During the uh, Fajr prayer, the Qira'ah is normally long. The reading of, from the Quran, the Fajr of the Quran is quite long. Uh, so it remained two, uh, um, two units of prayer, two rakat. Yeah. Uh, and also, except uh, also Maghrib, it remained, it, it, it was three rakat. Why? The Sheikh says, because it is the uh, witter, it's like the witter at the night time, but it's the witter of the day. That's why. Regard and and as for al-Zuhr and al-Asr and al-Isha, then they uh, uh, the, in in Mecca they remained rakatain rakatain, and then when the Prophet Sallallahu emigrated to Medina, then they became for rakat as we pray today. Yeah. So this is what the Sheikh mentions uh, in that paragraph. So then we go on to say. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Kama fil Hadith." So the Sheikh mentions the Hadith now. It says, "Kama fil Hadith." أول ما فردت أو أول ما فردت الصلاة ركعتين فلما هاجر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتمت صلاة الحضر بقيت صلاة الصفر هذا بإجماع أهل العلم أن الصلاة فردت بمكة وأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صلىها بمكة لكن لكن اختلفوا هل هي فردت قبل الهجرة بثلاث سنين؟ so then in this paragraph the sheikh goes to say says as in the hadith that the first of uh, the the prayers that were uh, you know the first first of the prayers they were uh, um, uh, made an obligation as in two units of prayer, and then when the Prophet ﷺ made the hijrah with his companions, uh, then it was the completion of those prayers was and they were and they were obligated to pray them, yeah, as in four. So the two the two two units as explained in the previous paragraph they became four except um, for when you are on your travel. So when you're on your travels, when you're truly on your travel, then you can shorten your prayers, we all know. You can uh, you can read, for example, the four units of prayer for a Zohar can be shortened to two. Likewise, Asr can be shortened to two. Likewise, Maghrib can be shortened to two. And the other prayers are not shortened. So, for example, Maghrib remains three. Uh, and Fajr remains too, yeah. So this is what the Sheikh has mentioned here, and he mentions there was a slight difference uh, uh, here in terms of uh, with regards to. Um, he mentions here that اختلفوا هل هي فردت قبل الهجرة that was it was, was this obligated uh, before Hijra uh, by three years or not? So there was a, a difference uh, uh, here with some of the scholars. But anyway, the Sheikh he goes on to say هذا هو الراجح. كما ذكر الشيخ هنا وكيلا قبل الهجرة قبل الهجرة بخمس سنين وكيلا قبل الهجرة ب ب بسنة واحدة وكيلا بسنة بسنة ونص بسنة ونص 
لكن الراجح هو ما ذكره الشيخ أنها قبل الهجرة بثلاث سنين وهل فرض, وهل فرض مع الصلاة شيء آخر من أركان الإسلام هذا محل خلاف So I'll just stop here, there's a lot of things mentioned here So then the Sheikh goes on to say that the most correct uh, opinion or position is how the Sheikh, the original author has mentioned it in this book that it was made obligate, obligatory uh, 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 before the Hijrah by three years So before the Hijrah by three years and there's varying different opinions. For example, was it one year before or was it five years before? But the Sheikh mentions that, as the original author has mentioned in the book, that the most correct position is what he has mentioned, which is that it was that the prayers, uh, five day prayers were obligated um, uh, three years before uh, the Hijra, as mentioned here. And then the Sheikh goes on to say uh, in, in, in the end of this paragraph, towards the last part of the paragraph, says this. Uh, he says that this is. Uh, with regards to there's a difference regarding um, um, let me just read this again the line he says وَهَلْ فَرَدَ, وَهَلْ فَرَدَ مَعَ الصَّلَاة شَيْءٌ آخر. So, so then they said that was there anything else that made obligatory besides or you know alongside the prayer uh, uh, with regards to the arkan the pillars of Islam um, and the Sheikh says that this issue this point here this place here with regards to that is the place of uh, difference, uh, uh, differing opinions between the scholars. So you see, uh, so some of them say that zakat, as zakat, the obligatory charity, was also um, made uh, obligatory uh, uh, in Mecca. Uh, and then the Sheikh he goes to explain here, uh, in summary, that uh, that um, basically it, it was made obligatory in uh, in Mecca. But in Medina, after the Hijra, in Medina, its uh, you know particularities were clarified. So in terms of like you know how much should we pay, you know what should occur, how do we do it, you know its details were clarified in Medina, but it was actually stipulated in his obligation in Mecca. So this is the correct uh, position, and the Sheikh mentions it here, and then he brings uh, some evidence in this paragraph here with Dalil Qulu Taala wa Atu Hakkahu Yawm Hasadeh. So if we go to um, the ayah that yeah, this is from uh, Surah Al Anam. You are Surah Al Anam. Uh, Eat of their fruit when they ripen, but pay the due thereof its zakat according to Allah's orders, a tenth or one twentieth on the day of its harvest. So, this is what the Sheikh has mentioned here. He also says, and the meaning or the purpose uh, of uh, a haq, haquhu, the mentioning of haquhu in this ayah, it means a zakat. It means a zakat, obligatory charity. And the Sheikh says that it is a Surah Makkiyah. That a Surah Makkiyah meaning that it was revealed in Makkah. All of it, yeah? All of this Surah. And also, likewise, in the spe- in his speech, Allah uh, Azza wa Jal, where uh, Allah mentions, وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقُّ مَعْلُومٌ لِسَائِرِ وَالْمَحْرُومٌ Surah Al-Ma'arij, verse 24 to 25. So if we go there and have a look also, and those in whose wealth there is a known right, for the beggar who asks and for the unlucky who has lost his or uh, unfortunate who has lost his property and wealth and his means of living has been straightened. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, last two paragraphs here, Aidan Hadi Surah Makiya. So this, this this the two ayahs that we read from Surah Al Marij also is from the surahs that were revealed in Makkah. Uh, and the purpose of the word Al Haq Al Ma'loom he it, it actually means a zakah. So the uh, so the obligation of zakat, its its uh, asal or its basis is in it was in Makkah, was revealed in Makkah, was obligated in Makkah. However, it was its details were clarified with regards to how we go about this were uh, in Medina. And then the Sheikh says, "Waqaul thani the second speech, the second view. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَظْهَرُ مِنْ كَلَامِ الشَّيْخِ هُنَا أَنَّ الزَّكَاءَ إِنَّمَا قُلِدَتْ فِي مَدِينَةِ وَلَمْ يَفْرُضْ فِي مَكَّةٍ غَيْرَ الرُّكْنِ الْأَوَّلِ وَهُوَ التَّوْحِيدُ وَرُكْنَ الثَّانِي وَهُوَ الصَّلَاةُ هَذَا ظَاهِرُ كَلَامِ الشَّيْخِ." So then, in the, and then, and then the second point here, the Sheikh says that uh, what is apparent from the speech of the original author, رحمه الله, is that zakah that it was um, uh, that it was obligated in Medina, al Medina, and it wasn't obligated in Mecca, uh, uh, other than the uh, the first pillar. Which which is a tawheed, which is the what, that's what his view is. 
regards to that. And the second pillar, which is as salah also in Mecca. And and this the Sheikh says that this is clear from the original author, the original Sheikh's speech of his book. So that uh, concludes uh, today's lesson. Uh, and inshallah, we'll continue from point 62. Inshallah. Um, going forwards. Uh, in fact, I might have actually gone through more than I should have. But inshallah, we'll continue from uh, point 62 uh, next week. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha 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 wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.